on the ground. Presented by The Cube. Hello, everyone. Welcome to SiliconANGLE Media's Palo Alto office. I'm John Furrier, co-host of The Cube, and I'm here with Peter Burris, our new content czar, newly hired into SiliconANGLE Media. Uh, Peter, welcome to this Cube conversation. I uh, want to chat with you about your thoughts on digital disruption, digital assets, and the future of digital as it as it rolls out now in the in the mainstream, the impact to business and 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 customers who are deploying digital transformation. What's the impact of them? Oh, it's everything. I mean, p human beings human beings do things differently based on the availability of information to them. And they, the more that a company does to create that information and package that information so they can use it, the better that company becomes as a partner to those decision makers. And so uh, given the impact of digital overall and how it's transforming the way businesses think about doing things and how businesses operate, in, unless you start from the ground up and thinking about how you're going to use digital to engage digitally, you really can't be a big player in the transformation that's going on in helping people uh, make better decisions. So I want to talk about a dynamic that we're facing in our business on SiliconANGLE Media, which comprises of obviously SiliconANGLE.com, publishing the Q, which is the, 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 our, our video team, and also Wikibon Research, which is our, our freemium and also premium subscription models around the data. Uh, and you have really two dynamics going on in this new flat world, everyone's connected. The vendors who sell stuff, gear or software or platforms or cloud, to their customers, we call the end users or consumers or whatever term, that's the dynamic. So the, the vendors have stuff that they want to sell to their customers, and but the transformation is happening in both theaters. Both the vendors themselves, who are the suppliers, the end users, are being disrupted by the, this digital transformation, aka the products, product market fit, and the end users who are deploying new ways to do things to increase their business. This is what we talk about in the cube all the time. This is what we're researching. How do you reconcile that in your mind? How do you explain that to people who want to know the secret sauce of this new digital future? Well, the historical norm, John, has always been that there's an adversarial relationship between people buying technology and people utilizing technology. And that's been more the case when we exchanged products. Relatively well-packaged, deeply embodied artifacts that I bought, I sold, went from me to you. But the minute you start doing things with services, now you end up in this very interesting dynamic where both parties are always having to work together. It's very sometimes difficult to say, what's yours, what's mine, where do you stop, where do I start? And as a consequence, we have to take a more community approach to thinking about this, where vendors are contributing to the community, buyers are utilizing, but also contributing back to the community. And it's that dynamic of how that sharing takes place that's really accelerating the rate of change that we see not just in business, but across all facets of life. And so what we want to do is we want to be in a position to improve those relations and facilitate engagement across people who sell, people who buy, the co-creation process by taking care of communities and working closely with communities to service the best stuff and then pump it back into the community so it can act. Uh, as you were answering, I got a, a call on my iWatch from Dave Vellante. So this is the new future, the iWatch, Internet of Things. People are getting digital distribution of stuff. That's phone calls, it's content. So you're seeing this high velocity environment of data assets. And you mentioned you know, uh, on our, our segment we were doing earlier around if it's not data, it's not an asset, it's not digital, which I, which I believe obviously is great. But this now, how people use data now is interesting because the analog world is changing to digital. The progression of the customer who are trying to solve things, finding proficiency and mastery, getting data, used to source data from data providers. That would be a gardener, a forester, where you used to work, or an analyst firm, or a blog, or a media outlet like the New York Times or Wall Street Journal. And as people, things get more complicated, time it does matter. But also, you can't create all the content yourself. So Gartner is a great example. They do everything in-house. You know, I mentioned Strata and O'Reilly Media. They do things in-house. That's the old way. Wikibon has shown that opening up content and opening up the data and having it available 
without asking for anything, a form or a lead gen uh, <laughs> form or email address, by just sharing data, that that's now integrating in. You have a vision around this, which is really impressive and I think very relevant to expand on, and that is the notion of reuse of content and data and how uh, the collaboration of the content development process doesn't have to be, I invented it alone. There's now a alchemy of approach where you mix things. That's kind of complicated. Do I own it? Is it licensable? How do I get it? I mean, it's a nightmare to kind of see through, but that's where the world's going. Look, John, if you're an individual who creates content, uh, the most exciting thing possible is to see someone use your stuff to get a job done. And ultimately, that's what we want to be about. We, you know, everybody, everybody in the Silicon Angle family is still going to get excited about creating that new article or creating that new cube gem or having that interview with, uh, you know, the CIO of Ford or the CEO of Oracle. But ultimately, what we want to be is we want to be in a position where a client takes something that we've created and embeds it in their work so that they are able to change how they do things. That's ultimately what's going to make us successful and what's going to excite us the most. Okay, I want to ask you just to wrap this up is the difference between the old way and new way. How, how can I tell who's old and who's new? What are some of the things as I'm a customer, I'm looking at you know, suppliers for data or products or services, you know, who, do, who should I collaborate? Who's, what do they look like? What's old and what's, what's side of the street? The old guys and new, old way, new way. Describe what the new way looks like and what the old way looks like. The new way is actually pretty simple. Uh, it's, uh, you, you'll, see, you'll see companies change from trying to present themselves as the smartest people in the room to having uh, deep influence in the best communities available. So that's the first thing, is who's got the best community and is doing the best job of surfacing knowledge out of that community. The second thing you'll see is who is utilizing digital differently. Who is using digital to create content? Who's, who's using digital to package content? Huge, who is using successfully digital to deliver content so that it can be processed and transformed? And then finally, who is really focused on helping customers embed these great knowledge nuggets that are being generated everywhere and making it possible for those nuggets to be applied directly to a business problem. So I think those are the three things. Who's doing the best job with community? Who's doing the best job at surfacing and focusing on the context of the problems? And who's doing the best job of making it possible to translate those into business capabilities quickly? For the folks out there that know the Cube, and for the folks who might not know the Cube or might not know Silicon Angle or Wikibon, um, you've had a fresh perspective from the outside now on the inside. How would you describe how that, those family of properties and assets are going to unfold. Certainly CrowdChat platform uh, is part of that as well. Um, how would you describe how this will evolve in the future? Well, John, I got excited about, I got excited about SiliconANGLE for a couple of reasons. The first is that I had a uh, client that I'd worked with for a long time, very, very close to him, uh, who came back to me and said, uh, we have been utilizing this new approach, this new company, this new vision to start grabbing their content and throwing it into our company to help our employees acculturate to some of the changes that we want to enact within our business. So that perspective is crucial. It's very, very different. But when I really think about what excited me is the idea of utilizing technology to engage customers directly uh, on a scale that's unprecedented. Uh, the communities that we have here at SiliconANGLE aren't measured in dozens or hundreds. They're measured in thousands. They're measured in millions. And the ability to work with communities at that scale and create exciting events and moments in those communities to catalyze conversation and interaction and excitement uh, so that great content's being generated is, is unprecedented. It's absolutely unprecedented. And so the idea that we're going to be participating and be where the community wants to be when they can't be uh, there, so at some of these large events that, uh, that uh, are so exciting in the industry today, is very, very important. The ability to bring the cube and related assets inside a company to help them facilitate their transformations, very important. But it's especially the idea that we ourselves are going to be you know, creating those moments where communities, the catalyzed communities, 
to come together around complex problems and through their interactions with our properties and our technologies, create content that allows all of them to do something better and differently. Path to value, path to proficiency, we love those terms. And again, it's so exciting because when you're doing something new, it's super fun. And when you do something different, we're different. Oh. And, and we're different and we're okay with that. And, that's, and, that's, and it's that, that is what, in many respects, the key is, right, John? Because at the end of the day, enormous, this is a period of enormous transformation, significant disruption, and innovation is at the forefront of everybody's minds. But a lot of people don't, often don't seem to understand exactly what that means. Innovation is not about inventing something, it's about changing the way people do things. And the only way you can successfully change the way people do things, if you put the vision in front of them, put the value propositions in front of them, and then give them the tooling and the knowledge that they need to adopt it and make it their own so that they can change. And it's that idea of helping individuals change in a social way across a broad array of the communities that we want to serve that really makes this so exciting. And certainly with the market softening, there's going to be a huge shift to value and there's certainly going to be an explosive growth and digital transformation in how vendors do their business and how they sell and how they engage with their customers and how their customers are solving problems. And we're going to be at the forefront of that and being suppliers of content and data in an open way. And, and we're going to hear a lot more about these vibrant communities and millions of people that we are going to continue to work with. And thanks so much for sharing your thoughts here in the Palo Alto studios. I'm John Furrier. Thanks for watching.